Welcome to H2K Infosys. H2K Infosys is a e-verify business based in Atlanta, Georgia, United States. We provide 100% job-oriented, instructor-led, face-to-face, true live online software training programs. It also includes access to Cloud Test Lab with software tools. We provide live project for you to work on. We also provide assistance with mock interviews, resume preparation and review, and job placement assistance. H2K Infosys is trusted by so many students across the world. H2K Infosys provides world-class services in IT training with real-time project work for corporates and individuals, special IT training for MS students in the United States, software design development, QA manual and automation, performance testing and maintenance, IT staff augmentation, job placement assistance and tech support. In tech cases, depending on the destination, you, right? I mean, there are different connections, different senders and different receivers. Uh, like we use the word producer for queues and topics. So we have the queue connection factory and topic connection factory, but the root is the connection factory. So any object, you could reference it using the connection factory. And same way, we have the queue connection and the topic connection. But when it comes to the producers, it's queue senders and topic publisher. And the consumers and switch consumers, we call them as the queue receiver and the topic subscriber. When we use this generic name, even when we get a different object, we actually don't need to change the code. That's why when we have a reference variable, we usually use the interface name so that we could put any of the subclasses. All right, when you have a reference variable says connection factory, you could put a queue connection factory in it or a topic connection factory. These are different kind of interfaces uh, that are used based on different destination paths. If you have queue, we use the queue, queue connection, queue sender, or queue receiver. It's queue sender and topic publisher. This topic is used for a publisher subscriber model, right? Who sends it, we call it as a publisher, and whoever, like it could be many, right? So there could be multiple subscriptions. We call them as a subscribers. But in a queue, it is the sender and the receiver. These are different interfaces that we have based on a specific destination type. So folks, when you create a session, right? So we have different kind of modes that we test it on, right? When you see auto acknowledge, it's a kind of mode that we are specifying with. So in this mode, the session automatically acknowledges the receiver of the message. Whenever the session returns from a call, or whenever the listener calls it to process the message, right? Whenever the, the receiver receives it and successfully processes it, right? It has an auto acknowledgement. And client acknowledge, the client has explicitly set an acknowledgement by calling the acknowledgement. By calling the messages acknowledgement, the client acknowledge acknowledges the consumption of the message. And this dupes, okay, acknowledge when you have multiple messages are coming, the receiver actually, you know, do a bulk acknowledgement. It does a, let's say, I have 10 messages, one second. It says, I have received all the 10 messages. It, it lazily acknowledges. And And this, this session transaction, we have to explicitly take care of the rollback and comments in our code. Whatever mode that we want to use, it, it depends on the kind of a scenario. So all the transactions we explicitly want to manage, we, we, we make them in the session. So whenever it receives or whenever it is processed, we just want to acknowledge it, we use the auto acknowledge mode. So upon successful processing, we want the client to explicitly acknowledge it, we use the client acknowledge mode. So these are different kinds of modes that we could use. So we now we know what a messaging is and why do we use it, right? Well, could, when, could someone tell what a messaging and why do we use for that? Okay. 
Mr. Is, is, is that thing but some kind of some information that we want this kind of information that we want to send, right? JLS is, I, uh, it, it's not a provider book. It's very important. Many people, like the newbies get confused as JMS is a specification. There are many vendors or, you know, many providers who provide them. And we have different messaging domains, which is the point to point and the publisher subscriber. Q provides the point to point communication and topic does or it supports publisher subscriber model, right? So we have different GMS objects that we need to properly send, uh, you know, get a message, send a message, and for the receiver to receive it, we have the connection factory object. And what are the other GMS objects? We have the connection, we have the session, and we have the producers and consumers. These are the generic terms that we have seen. For Q, we call it, we say Q sender and Q receiver. But for a topic, we see them as publisher and subscriber. And in general, folks, we don't write code like that, right? We send a message, we just receive it. No, we don't write it, right? We have a different listener wherein we want to receive the messages that are actually sent to the queue, right? So we could create a class, a listener class for it. So I'm, I'm, I'm creating a text message listener. Like usually you don't have like the sending and receiving in, uh, in the same piece of method or you know same snippet just sending and receiving like this right in one piece of a code someone is sending a message and in some other in a different application or different program we'll be receiving it we'll, you know we have listeners who listen to them right So there is a method on message. So whenever it is, I mean, whenever the listener is subscribed, or you know, this is set as a listener to a queue, right? Whenever a message comes to the queue, this method actually gets the message. Let's see here we are sending a text message. Right, so what do we do? I'm just casting it to a text message because message is chunky. Right, Right, okay. usually here someplace we have a code which actually and the message, but receiving it's not just decided, right? There will be some other things which actually receives it. So, how do we actually write code to receive it? How does it understand that this is this listener or you know, this is a system who wants to listen to the message? What do we do? It's an observer pattern, folks. We have discussed that listener is a perfect example of an observer pattern, right? So we actually add it as a listener. We created a listener object, right? And what do we do? You know, we are adding it as an observer. So whenever, right, whenever there is some mistake that stands to the queue, this will be aware of it. This listener will be aware of it and the content comes here. 
the message, whatever you want to do with, with the message, we actually keep that in the on message. Look, we're just writing the code here. It could be like, you know, would I have this code in any different entity? Usually, when we go in a real time environment, we, we, we do have the queues of topics that are created. So, what do we do is we configure them in our server. So, through the admin consoles, you can just you know, uh, create a queue in that sphere, configure in the specific server. There, there will be some name and reports wherein we could access it the queues. So we'll get that information about the queue and we create them in the server and we look them up using the JNDA lookup. As I've seen, context of lookup. But when we are doing some kind of a bad job, right, in channel alone programs are bad jobs, we use the kind of code that we just did in JMS example. Books, any questions? We have this like yeah, high level information on this. But books actually went through it's, it's very easy. You could just, you know, run it on your um on your local also. But don't keep it as some you know, some space and all that. But just you could just have it for I mean if it's not always running, I don't think it's a big issue. But whenever you're trying to practice, it's just we just get it, unzip it and then we just stop it. What that exactly is this one? Is it kind of server? Or? It's a provider. It's a broker. Okay. And what is exactly? We, we, we call it as a message broker. Choose and actually, you know, they'll be running inside this message broker. So okay. if, I, if I don't have this, right? Because uh -huh. the queue is actually up and running in this message broker. But now I don't have it. What happens when I run it? It won't be able to look up for the queue. I'm saying in the specific code, we call it as a broker, but it's a kind of server which is actually up and running on it. So we are saying, you know, you go it's it's on a particular port, right? You said it's kind of uh, queue, right? Yes, they are present in this active MQ server. The queue, they are present in the active MQ server. If you want to access okay, the so queue, it has to be up and running. So, okay, so what I'm trying to ask is, uh, this is your local machine, or you can say client. Uh, where does this active MQ go? If you it, it is in my machine, but when you go to real time, we don't have it in your machine. But you can, you could have it hosted on any box. Okay, and it will. Do yeah, yeah, I'm saying local time. host. If it is a different thing, I'll just assign that that host name and all the details. Okay, so. So here I'm actually you, starting it. You know. So that, Okay. That, that's okay. This one is, uh, you say active MQ is a queue, right? So if you no, say. Active, sorry, active MQ is a message broker. You could have topics and queues created. It's one of the pro uh, gems providers that's available in that. Okay, okay. That, that's uh, okay. For the specification, this... we need a provider, right? See, like a server container, we have Tomcat and all this and different things, web logic of sphere. Same way, like for the JNS providers, we have multiple things. It's one of the providers. And it, usually the name we call them as like the JNS providers or message brokers, where we have like, we create the topics and things. Yeah, okay. But uh, this one is, uh, let's let, let's say this active MQ is on other server. And mm -hmm. this is your uh, laptop, which is a client. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sending a message uh, on that server. Now we need to change the TCP uh, link, right? Yes. Right. So now if my computer is a uh, one more client or receiver or some kind of thing. Yes. You have to give the same link. Let's say in someone else's box, right? Let's say in Joseph's box, we have the queue installed. 
okay so q we have like the message broker and q is created inside it okay, okay? so i as a producer i get this link and you know over the network of course i should be able to connect the box right i put the messages in it and let's say you are consuming the messages you could connect to just a box and create a destination or like you know get a consumer and listen to the messages okay so uh, do i need to use the specific api for that one then yes like of course if, if i'm a receiver uh, uh-huh. the same api active what you said see yeah that's a good question actually the gms has some kind of a level of abstraction that you could uh, maintain and you could get it without using the specific active mp api GMS has its own specification, but if you're not using the lookups and the objects, it's more advisable to use the same. So, you see, it's different for different things. The IBM ones you could have a you know for ja- non-Java consumers and all as well. With ActiveMQ, it's strict towards the GM. Let's say mine is Java and yours is a .NET. ActiveMQ is not a good option. Okay. It, it it's like different providers as you can, but let's say if you have like non-Java networks or you know the destinations that you want to connect, IBM works better. It has a different API wherein it supports. Okay, it need so, not necessarily, yeah. Uh, so you said in that uh, slides, uh, for server you need to look into JND and for local something like that. Yes. What was that? For server, we configure them in the server through the admin console. We configure the queues in the server, and we look them up using the JND lookup. Did you ever try creating a data source in your VPN or the server for data source in in, in your server? Yeah. Right. Same way, we 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 could create the queues in the server. Like you know, there will be some like a, a windows which you get to create. Uh, you specify the post. You specify the connection factory names or give a name for the connection factory. You specify the queue name. We create them in the server. So when you create them, we could look them up using the JND API. It's just two pieces of code. We just give the name that we actually give. Providing the server, or we actually when we create the name, right? We give a name for the queue. We just say context dot lookup. We specify the name. I mean the standalone. I'm sure you know uh, this is a code. Whatever we have seen here, but when we have when in a server environment, we use JDI lookup to look up for it. So we go to the server, create our configure the queue over there, and Using the context dot lookup method, we look up the connection path trees, or we look up the queues. Uh, I'm not getting this one. Server environment. What exactly does that mean? And the standalone. In a, in a, see, what is standalone? This program runs without a server, right? We 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 are not involving any servlet container to run this. Like okay. Tomcat, we're not using any of these things, right? Okay. Let's say I have an application which is hosted on the server, a web application, right? Let's say I have a screen whenever save message and send, right? There's a button in the screen wherein the end user says send. I want to drop it in the queue, right? Okay. So this is all thing is hosted on a server, right? In that there will be some code which I'll be getting, uh, which I'll be, which we will be executing upon send or click of that button. Right. Okay. Finally, it goes back to the controllers or your action that executes some code, right? So in that, to get the queue, instead of writing code like creating this, we use the JNDI lookup. This exactly this code. So we create a context and we say context dot lookup of because this will be available in a server environment. We'll be able to look it up with this name. Okay, but JND is like uh, Java naming directory, right? Yes. They have their uh, yes. maintained by Microsoft and then abandoned. 
but yes. uh, those names could be actually created like we could create data sources or queues or topic and we could look them or search for them or get them using the jnda lookup okay but those urls or those links are already there right it's not no we me? we give the names we create them in the server those are not predefined those okay. those names or for the data sources or for any of the queues we go and create them in the server i don't say create we configure that like you know it's more as a kind of configuration we don't go and create them we configure them in the server okay 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 uh, now i'm getting it actually this 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 one uh, it's used in uh, continuous continuous integration softwares hudson and jenkins okay yeah, when we do that also uh, if if there is some queues and have to configure all these things yeah. so any question any questions hello yes uh, can you send me the you know uh, advanced advanced uh, java course you know, the uh, material to my email could you drop me an email Okay. I um, I mean, I don't ask. Okay, sure. Are you, are, are you from the seven thirty class? Yeah, seven thirty class, but uh, I I had I wanted to attend this JMS class. No, 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 no problem, Masha. I'm just checking if you're the same person, so that I I have track of your email in the email section. I'm just yeah, checking yeah, sure, for that sure. to yeah. send email to you. Also, so, the you 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 have a, a recorded videos link, right? And these videos will be uploaded there. Yes. Okay. And couple, of, I just I looked at the link and couple of last couple of videos, I think uh, they're not worth. So many of our students have given testimonials on how our training programs are. You will find them on kudzu.com and on our website h2kinfosys.com. On our website h2kinfosys.com, you will also find more detailed information on who we are. the courses that we offer what each course covers also if you're interested in a demo program please register on our home page on the left hand side just give us more information about yourself and we will send you a link for a demo class the demo class is absolutely free experience our commitment by just attending an orientation workshop at no cost Our team of faculty and advisors are here to guide you with the right information. If you still have more questions, please feel free to call us. Call us at 770-777-1269. This is a United States number. If you're calling from the UK, call us at 020-337-17615. You can also email us at training at h2kinfosys dot com or h2kinfosys at gmail dot com. Thank you for watching our videos. 
We wish you a great career in information technology.